Hello everyone, this is Eric, the Asian movie enthusiast, and this is my review of Busu, a Japanese movie from 1987 that was directed by Jun Ichikawa. When I recently reviewed Tony Takatani a few weeks ago, I realized that a handful of Ichikawa's movies were available on YouTube, and we already discussed how to become myself last year. So let's take a look at Busu, which was actually his debut feature film. Now, the following plot synopsis was taken from a website called Windows on Worlds, which has quite a few reviews on uh, Asian movies. And uh, definitely check out that website if you want more recommendations. For reasons we never quite understand, Mugiko leaves her island home after a traumatic incident and moves in with her aunt in Tokyo with the intention of becoming a geisha. It seems Mugiko's mother was once a famous geisha herself until she met Mugiko's late father and left for a more conventional life in the peaceful countryside. Unfortunately, Mugiko is not a fantastic fit for the world of the geisha, being somewhat innocent and childishly clumsy, not to mention her ongoing grumpiness. Nevertheless, everyone at the geisha house is keen to help her, if only out of loyalty to her mother. Now, the nice thing about Busu is that there is a pretty legitimate character arc in this film, at least in terms of how the protagonist eventually sheds her gloomy outlook on life after interacting with others throughout the film. You know, near the beginning, her situation is presented very well. Like, she's new to the area, very shy, and her first day at school is filled with anxiety. And then she seems to have no interest in any social activities, really, nor any friendship with classmates near the beginning. But as the film progresses, you know, she starts to open up more. She finds some interests and joys in life. And this is definitely kind of a coming-of-age style of film. Now, one of the things I enjoyed most about this film is that a lot of the information that's presented is expressed through visuals. For example, like the director shows this girl's first day at her new school by using, like, uh, first-person perspective shots that are mixed in with the third-person stuff with other students kind of looking at her, basically scoping out their new peer. I also like the scenes that quickly edit in images that are like going through her mind. You know, they could be glimpses of her father who passed away, stuff like that. And then there are other very specific moments, like a scene early on when a boy apparently says or does something to her that really irritates her, and it's like a wide shot from a classroom. And we don't hear what's said, but we understand how she feels about it <laughs> with what happens. So I, th I thought this was a very effective way of presenting things because, you know, you could rely a lot on expository dialogue and stuff, but this film doesn't really do that. A lot of it is visually presented and it makes it very realistic and dramatically compelling because it goes this route, you know, and, and it does capture like, you know, the, the scenes at the school, at least, like the student interaction, including the little moments of uncomfortability that, uh, that occurs between kids at school. And there's also very little melodrama in this either, but it still somehow creates emotion. So it's a very well-crafted movie. As an added bonus, we get some, you know, interesting looks at Japanese performance art. Uh, some scenes take place at the school or at the geisha house, but a lot of uh, there are a lot of, like, location shots that were made on the urban streets. I'm not sure if they shot this guerrilla style, you know, without permits or whatever, but, uh, you know, we get to see some festivals, which seem to be actually happening while they were filming the movie. And, uh, you know, it's nice, because some Japanese films, even really good ones, will have a lot of indoor uh, location shots or a lot of sets that are in use. But this is uh, has quite the opposite. You know, there's... Uh, we actually get to see Japan a lot uh, while watching the film, which I like. You know, the overall story is pretty basic, but Busu focuses much more on the character interaction over the plot. It's kind of laser-focused on our protagonist, and her development is very strong. The lead actress, Yasuko Tomita, is really good. A very natural performance. She expresses her emotions very well. As of 2023, she has 93 acting credits to her name, so she has had a good career over the years. I may need to scope out some of her other high-profile roles. The music in this has kind of a relaxing feel to it, but there's also like a quiet intensity at times as well. Definitely creates a mood. I mean, I strongly recommend Busu. It's one of this director's strongest films, I think. 
and it would serve as a pretty great introduction to his work, currently available on YouTube. And as always, I'll see you next time.